Now calling ticket number SP1466801, ticket SP1418401, ticket SP1411848, SP1283888, SP1452301, SP1467130, ticket SX. Two four five four three two eight. Ticket. Ticket SP 1409982. And so SP 1409983 and SP 1283889. Appearances for the record starting with counsel for the people, please. For the record, Your Honor, good morning. Nia Chiku Mason, City of Detroit Law Department, 43471. All right. And Mr. Uh, Williams, can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Timothy, standing before the court as a state citizen and not U.S. citizen. Uh -huh. My nationality is American Indian, standing as the people. Is that your full name? What's your full name? Timothy Williams. All right, Timothy Williams. All right, and sir, you know you have the absolute right to have an attorney. You understand that? Uh, are you foregoing that right today? Represent myself. You're representing yourself. Do you understand that um, because some of these are misdemeanors, uh, constitutional rights kick in, such as fines going up to $500, possible jail time up to 30 days. And that's why uh, they advise or offer you the opportunity to have an attorney. But you're not wishing to have that attorney today. Is that correct, sir? Correct. Okay. Make sure you keep your voice up really, really loud, okay? Um, and today is your motion. Um, so I'll let you start by uh, providing what you want to start as far as your motion for why I don't have jurisdiction over these particular matters. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I submitted a, a affidavit of non-existent corporation to the corporation council, uh, Alexa Schneider. Okay, she's not she's not here. You can see it. All right, but state state your reasons why I don't have jurisdiction. Well, the state of Michigan Constitution states that Article 1, Section 9, uh, the bills of retainers is unlawful. Section 9, slavery and uh, voluntary service rule. And ex post facto laws, uh, it, just, it just states that I don't need a driver's license, registration, or insurance to travel within state so that's what what case does it say that in that you don't need to drive uh, michigan life? michigan uh constitution article one section nine and ten clause three here is it the michigan it was, constitution yeah of was 1963 is it possible he could come closer to that microphone that you said? article one section nine and ten clause three okay so you said article michigan constitution Section 19 says, in all prosecutions for libels, the truth may be given in evidence to the jury. And if it appears to the jury that the matter charged as libelous is true and was published with good motives and for justifiable ends, the accused shall be acquitted. Is that Article 1, Section 9 and 10? Oh, clause, I thought you said clause. section 19. No, no, no. Okay. You section, see, you're not speaking up loud enough for me to hear. Section 9 and 10, clause 3. 9. Slavery and involuntary servitude. Meaning the state of Neither Michigan. state nor involuntary servitude, unless for the punishment of crime, shall be tolerated in the state. What slavery am I asking you to do right now? Uh, the state, state of Michigan is trying to convert my right to a good privilege, trying to force me into a contract. You don't have to get a license, but if you're stopped in a car while you're driving, it's a rule of the state of Michigan that you have to have a license to drive. You know, you do not ever have to get a license, ever. But if you drive a vehicle, the Constitution affords each state and municipality the opportunity to create laws to protect people. I get it. The, the statutes is to enforce law. 
Correct. And the Constitution is to uphold uh, lawful law. That's right. And the citizens have a right to travel throughout the state. You can travel on a bicycle, on your feet, on a bus. If you do not want to get a license, the license is created so that you have the opportunity to know that you understand what the rules and the traffic signals mean. So that because this is what happens. And I, I'm, I the court gets to interpret why certain laws are put into place. Because if incidents happen where people don't have licenses and don't have uh, the ability for us to track that person driving, then what you're going to do is sue the state of Michigan because you're going to say they should have had something in place. I comprehend what you're saying, but Section 10 say... Let me look at Section 10. Okay. It says no bill of attenders... Attenders. Attenders post facto law or laws impairing the obligation of contract shall be enacted. Meaning, the state of Michigan cannot force contracts amongst citizens. We, is, we have a right, Absolutely. a constitutional right to travel out the no. in an automobile. Yeah, not a, not no, a, it doesn't say in an automobile. Where in the Constitution does it say you have a right to travel in an automobile? Our constitutional right is to have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's right. We travel in automobiles, not No, 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 no. Tell me where in the Constitution it says that Shakira, you can have an automobile. Shakira versus Thompson. Shakira we versus a, Thompson. Shakira versus Thompson. We have a right to travel. What states? Jurisdiction is jurisdiction. You do. I agree. Listen, I'm not, I'm not denying you have the right to travel. You can travel in the state of Michigan. And in any state that I'm aware of, in order to travel and ride in your own vehicle, automobile. you have to have automobile, vehicle, car, whatever it is. If you want to physically get behind the wheel and drive it, you have to have a driver's license. I'm not saying you can't travel. You can travel as much as you want on the road. But a minute ago, you said, I don't have to have a driver's license. You don't. But if you want to get behind a vehicle and drive it yourself personally, you have to have a license. You don't have to. Listen, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But if you choose to, then certain things kick in as rights that the states and municipalities and governments have to enforce the rules as long as they've been found not unconstitutional. It's not unconstitutional. Remember, we can have stricter laws in the states. They can't violate federal laws. But they can be stricter and each state has decided and i was talking about the state of michigan the state of michigan has decided in order for you to drive an automobile a car a vehicle that you have to have a license your business yes correct your business uh, commerce no taxi cabs uber no because they have different type of licenses in the state of michigan too so they have a specific license if you want to do commerce they're different licenses so driver's license say there are different levels to them so yes, for business. If it was only a business license, I would get you. You only need one for business. But on a driver's license, that's not what it says. But I'll let you continue your argument, and then I'll let her have her response, Madam uh, Prosecutor. So I'll let her. Okay. Respond. Your Honor, I would, I would agree with the court on that. I would also kind of reiterate that it is a privilege to drive. It is not a right to drive. It is a privilege. Uh, I object, the Constitution. I object. Oh, she didn't object to your statement. I object. To what? She used Based the word, on? She used the term travel. 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 Can you use the word travel? Can you find the word drive? Driving is getting into an op is getting into a vehicle and moving it under the power of an engine or under the power of an engine on public highways, streets, and freeways. And the, the definition of travel is from to point A to point B. You know, and again, and not driving. Excuse commerce. me, I'm not finished with my argument. I allowed you to proceed, and I expect you to give me that same courtesy. Okay, thank you. Also, there's a rational basis that the Supreme Court has articulated when it comes to the Constitution. The fact that I'm sorry, I'm looking at him instead of reporting your honor. So um, cool. rational basis. For, the, for our rules and regulations. And that is for the security and the safety of the public and the public welfare for people. Uh, and that's why- No, 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 no. We're not gonna play the interruption game. This is not the interruption game. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond, but while she's talking, we're not gonna interrupt her and say under what law, okay? 
Go ahead, Attorney Mason. So there's a rational basis which the Supreme Court has articulated in cases that show that they have a right to, re to, to regulate certain types of activities among the people in the United States. And so a rational basis is the security and the protection of people regarding driving multi-vehicle, heavy vehicles upon its public highways, roads, freeways. And I believe that he does not have an unfettered right. You just don't have an unfettered right uh, without any type of regulation to travel in a vehicle on the public highways, freeways, roads in the city of Detroit, the county of Wayne, the state of Michigan, and the United States of America. I also believe that this court does have jurisdiction, which has been given to it through the state of Michigan, through uh, the state constitution, which gives and creates the judicial, the legislative, and the executive branches, and through the powers of the federal constitution, which comes down and grants that power to the 36th district court. In addition, Your Honor, based upon Mr. the citation provided to Mr. Williams, he has pretty much relegated himself to this jurisdiction when he did get his license, which ends, which starts with this letter W. He lives within the jurisdiction of this city, which uh, the address is, if I can make that out, 19419 Rosemont Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. So he has uh, subjected himself to the jurisdiction of this state, of this city, and this county. Did you have a response, sir? Yes, yeah, so I'm not a U.S. citizen, and the ID she saw me, I never had a driver's license. And the ID the council since 2018. I am not a resident of the U.S. I'm a U.S. A citizen, state citizen, state of the union citizen, not a U.S. Okay, citizen. Okay, so. If you're not, this is proof that I never had a driver's license. Okay. So you use the Constitution in your, I read your brief. Use Constitution, uh, the United States 13. What about 14? I said, what about the 14th Amendment? We talked about incited in your stuff, the 13th Central Amendment Oregon. about slavery. But then, so the Constitution applies to, correct? The United States of America Constitution applies. Correct. Okay. So. The 14th Amendment states. For the 14th Amendment, you had state citizens. After the 14th Amendment, you, that's when they created U.S. citizens. Okay. So you already know it says all persons, persons born person. or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the states in which they reside. How do we deal with that? I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm a state citizen. But they said all persons born or naturalized. Naturalized means that you just come here. That's not what that means. I have no contracts with the state of Michigan. Just because you don't Michigan. want to have it doesn't mean it's it not doesn't about exist. Not we follow the Constitution. You took yes, the Constitution, I, right? Listen, it says no state, it further goes on to say no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor should any state, nor should any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. Right. So this the law, is the law this of is, the land, which this is, is supreme due, so rulings. Here's the due process of the land, though. If you didn't commit these offenses, you have a trial. That's what due process is. But I submitted a denial of corporation. This court has no jurisdiction. I have no contract with the state, the state of Michigan whatsoever. You don't? Okay. So the fact that you say you don't have contract doesn't make that not true. And we're not talking about contracts. We are right. simply, you're not a corporation, you're a human. If these tickets were written against your corporation, that would be different. This it is, is against, against a the, human being that against, I can see physically in front of me right now. You can see me, but the paperwork don't see me. They, that's a council ID from 2018. That's a dead entity. Listen, and it's a council ID, but they found you all while you were driving behind a vehicle. A Chrysler 2006 white vehicle at East Davidson and Mount Elliott, a Cadillac vehicle 
in the area of Midden and Gunston, uh, GMC vehicle in the area of East Jefferson and Garland Streets. Your Honor, the Chrysler no threat. and that, that you just had those three vehicles, it looks like. Your Honor, I pose no threat to the community. And I, I travel. Well, I'm state. not saying, but you have to follow what the laws of this city are. Follow the law of the land. Supreme Court ruling, Supreme Court versus Thompson. Okay, read, right to read to me what it's saying. Because the constitutional right to free movement between states was implicated, the court applied a standard of strict scrutiny and held none of these interests were sufficient to sustain the way we were. Uh, the court held that there was no evidence that the requirement would make planning a budget more predictable than who gets the point. Finally, finally the court rejected the argument that Congress had authority. Okay. Finally, the court rejected the argument that Congress had authorized the waiver period because Congress does not have the power to authorize violations of equal protection law. And the equal protection clause is- And what is that case referring to though? Uh, the right to travel. The right to travel. Was it in a vehicle? Automobile. Automobile, was it in an automobile? And further, the court reaffirmed that the right to travel under the 14th Amendment, privileges and immunities clause, and Suez versus Roe, 1999. Right. And this so, is held by the Supreme Court. So the right to travel in the automobile, that's what it was talking about in that case? No, the first one. The How, else versus you Shapiro. Huh? How else did you travel throughout the state? No, no, no. No. You didn't say How exercise. else do you travel? You didn't say it's, no, 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 no. How else do you travel? Tell me, there, tell me the means of transportation that we have in the United States of America. And I want you to tell me every means. We have trains. Automobiles. We have planes. We have bicycles. We have buses. We have luxury coaches. We have, we have the RV motor vehicles. We have tractor trailers. We have legs. Automobiles. Now we have, we have automobiles. So, what specifically in there does it say that the right to travel only applies to automobiles? No, not only. Of course okay. Not. Of course not. So it doesn't say you have the right to travel only if you use this means. It says you have the right. If I tell you you can't go someplace, that you can't have the right to travel, you can't leave at all. Either you must be in prison or you must be on probation. And I'm having some type of authority that leads me to do that. I can't stop you at any point from time today. If you want to walk out and go to another state, you can. But you have to use a means that you're able to use. And once you go behind the seat of a car and vehicle and you use it to travel, because I'm not stopping you from traveling. Because you can get there. It may not be by the way that you want to get there, but you, and it doesn't say in there that it's by the way that you want to get there. It says if I stop you, there are many means by which you can get to where you want to go. But if you take the opportunity to get behind the wheel of a vehicle, you now subject yourself to the rights and privileges of those who have a driver's license. Under what law? Under the law of the United States of America, passed down to the state of Michigan, passed down to the municipality to create laws and regulations to help with the protection of society. And I told you the reason why, and I don't know exactly, I haven't read the legislative intent, but I'm imagining it was twofold to protect society from one another and at least give us some type of skills. Now I know you have the skills or maybe you should possess the skills to know what traffic signs are, to know what speed limit signs are, to understand what all of those things are and probably also to help with the liability because if there were accidents and nobody was held liable because I don't have to have anything, well then who's in trouble? The individuals, yes. But then they're gonna say, but you let us do this. And you fix the roads and you created roads and paths for us to be able to travel on or traverse on or to drive on or to move about on 
And now it's your responsibility to govern these roads. I have to object to that. Nothing you said isn't law. Like that's that's not constitutional. It's the law. It's the the Fourteenth Amendment is what I'm standing on. Anything what about the versus, U.S. The Michigan U.S. The, this is the Constitution of the United States of America that I read. Okay. That is the 14th Amendment of the United States of America Constitution. But you asked the laws of Michigan, right? Which is the which one is it? Do you want the laws of Michigan or do you want the laws of the United States of America? It's the same thing. Exactly. No, 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 no. My point. no, no. Sir, sir, Mr. Mr. No, Williams, no. you are no. here today. I, let me say, let me start. No, no, I think, okay, with the I think both of us misinformed. We, we, no, I, I I'm not misinformed. Mr. Williams, you came today because your name means something to you. And you have all these tickets and you would like to resolve them at some point in time because your name means something to you. And the fact that you have these matters out here means something to you. Because otherwise you would do what everybody else does who believes in this stuff and they would just not show up and just be like whatever because it doesn't apply to them. But your name means something and you want to take care of these. You, even if you're not traveling, one of your tickets, ticket SP, one four one eight four zero one. Count one of that ticket is open alcohol in a motor vehicle driver. Would you like to at least address that ticket? Well, he people want to see an old bottle in the back seat. So from and so so you hear it, Mr. Williams. You can address these tickets, right? Because that's a ticket that don't have to do nothing with you driving at that point in time. That's a ticket in the state of Michigan that you're saying that the traveling. You weren't traveling at that point in time. It's just a ticket about what's going on in that vehicle that you own and you have. So how do we address? And that's my, that's my, I won't say confusion, but that's my, my point where I need clarity. How do we address those tickets? If you say that the rest of them, how do we address tinted windows? It's a private automobile. There's nothing wrong with it. What about seatbelts? How do you see how a seatbelt on that's in the world? So you come and you want to talk about the travel and the rights, so you just want to do whatever you want to do. Absolutely not. Okay. Because why don't you want to do whatever you want to do? I'm relying on the UA, U.S. Supreme Court rulings, so I can't be charged <laughs> willfully just driving around like I'm really relying on law. Right. I'm not just out here willy nilly right. doing what I want to do. That's right. not so what about let's move on to another ticket? What about your insurance? If it's so important to you that you can drive with your car and everything, why is your car not insured? Something happened to happen. That's freaking nature. That's Me so and the other citizen will. So, Mr. Williams, if I just decide I don't want to have it and then somebody gets critically injured and they sue you for their, for their people's injuries, because that's what is happening. It's never enough resources. That's not the point here. Okay. That's not the point. So, why don't you have the, well, not the insurance. Okay, another alcohol. Your Honor, with all due respect, I think my other courtroom is. Okay, you're out of the courtroom. All right. I, you know, unless you can show me Your how the 14th Amendment of the United States of America Constitution, I'm going to print it out to you. The student, she just explains to you how you have jurisdiction. Nothing she said was true. I just never had a driver's license. It's not true. I never had a driver's okay, license. You don't have, which makes it even worse because you can't drive. If she you said I have a driver's license. Okay, you don't honest. have a driver's license. You had a Michigan State ID, correct? Which was. Canceled. Okay, which was canceled a long time ago. US so passport. you don't so you don't have a driver's license, am I correct? I have a state, state passport. Okay. What's the state passport? Let me see it. Is it something legally given by the United States of America? Of okay, where is it? She haven't reached out to the DOS or federal court to get the like United States of America passport. Of America, not so, the United States. So the 14th Amendment applies to you. Let me print out the 14th Amendment of the United States. And you can go to your back to your court on maternity basis. Thank you. Donna, which, nothing she said has been. I, I don't know. Let me, I'm going to print this out and I'm going to let you sit there and read over well, it. Because now you're showing me that you are abiding by the Constitution of the United States of America 
by getting this passport, am I correct? That is correct. That's a wonderful passport. Card. I love it because it allows you to travel internationally, locally, and everything, and go about any way that you need to get there. And let's drive it in the state of Michigan. Yeah, that's it. Come on, right? Yep. Yep, get in the back. That's fine. Just sit there and read that. Off the record in this motion for a moment. Ready on the other matter, Attorney Bachman? Are we on the record with this? Yeah, let me just finish it up and make. I gave him a document that I just wanted to check on, and then can he come up closer? Then because I terrible. terrible. So security, I need. It's, it's based on security in the courtroom, Miss Sandy. Back on the record in the People versus Timothy Williams, Mr. Williams, say your name real loud for me. Timothy. All right. What's your last name? Williams. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. Mr. Williams, did you have an opportunity to look over the 14th Amendment I gave you? Yes, I did. And once again, this don't pertain. They say all oh, persons born or naturalized. I'm not a person. I'm a live human being. Okay. All right. You have any final words before I make my ruling? No. And the current prosecutor that came and said what she said, I served the Former prosecutor. former prosecutor. You did. I saw you that know, you served even it. Even if she taken her place, she's still honoring the same oath as elected. That's right. Family. So I served a uh, default and noticed a cure, and I haven't got a response. Yeah. The, the default. She, so I asked you to file a very specific motion, Mr. Williams. It was to challenge. I said to challenge jurisdiction. The last time you were here, you wanted to challenge jurisdiction. And I wanted you to be able to challenge jurisdiction. You can't challenge whatever you, like whatever it is. So the court's gonna find that you are a, in accordance, especially because you you have, you say that you operate under the constitution. Well, the constitution is all of it. It's not the parts we wanna choose. Well, you got the separation of powers. I'm under judicial jurisdiction. I, I am judicial say. jurisdiction. What, you judicial? I'm a judicial? judge. So you're an Article Three judge. I'm a judge under the Constitution. Like so I'm a judge. So, so, so I've taken the oath to follow the Constitution of the United States, more particularly the Constitution of the the City of Detroit and the State of Michigan. That's those are the things you do have to follow. I'm and facts of what Michigan State. Okay, so who has authority over you then? So. I'm going to rule that I do have authority over you for these tickets. What's the next action that you want to take? Do you want to have a jury trial on these matters where we have citizens decide? You can argue all of this that you want to argue with the exception of jurisdiction, because I'm you ruling explain, today that I have jurisdiction over you. I understand, but can you explain how do you have jurisdiction over you? Because under the Constitution, it gives the powers to the three parts. You're right. So we have we have the, the judiciary, the legislator and the president, right? So in, in the state of Michigan, that would be like our governor, then the legislative branch, then the judicial branch, right? So judicial branch is like the judges. We're the ones who enforce the law that the legislators make. And then the governor's job is to make sure that they represent the state in all matters that take that place and happen. The United States of America, and it's the same the power to the legislature to enact laws on persons. You, you, you are quoting it exactly. You are so intelligent that it's it's you're stating the argument that makes my argument stronger for all of this. You're saying that the legislature is up under judicial. That's no, I'm saying the legislator creates laws that the judicial there are. So when they create the no, constitution, it was yes. made for checks and balances, right? So that no one will overrun everybody, right? So it was like the the president, the executive office. I couldn't think of it for the life of me. The executive office operates separately, but has checks and balances from the legislative and the judicial branch, as well as the judicial branch has to follow the legislative orders. But it's through their interpretation that the judicial branch has is that has that and can check legislators as well as we just had a whole bunch of like hearings about. All of that. So you're stating it perfectly correct. Yes, Mr. Williams. I comprehend that the legislature create 
statute to yeah. pause for the person, for the U.S. citizen. That's I'm right. Not a U.S. citizen. I'm a, you, a U.S. citizen. I'm you, a state citizen. Okay. State citizen. But even if you're not a U.S. citizen, then under the 14th Amendment, it states that any per, person who comes here and person. enforce themselves person. of it, you whether you... The, the, Mr. Timothy Woods, who's standing before me today with the orange, yellow, looking very nice, button-up shirt, you are a person, according to the United States of America Constitution, which you have under your, which you say you have that has jurisdiction over you. Like, it makes you a person. You're breathing, you're living, you're walking, you're moving. You have the activity, all of your limbs, your eyes, your ears, your brain is phenomenal. So you are a person according to what these acts and rules need to follow. Acts and rules, not laws. That's my rule. What do you want to do next with this? I would like to enter default judgment on Okay, the um, motion denied. What do you want to do? Your options are that you can have a bench trial. That's just a trial before me. All the officers would have to appear online or we can have them come in person. And so then you deny my affidavit. I am denying your affidavit. Okay. I do a jury trial. Okay. You want jury trial? Okay. Let me get you a date. Are you representing yourself or do you want counsel? Okay. Representing myself. Okay. Jury trial date is it? It's April 22nd. Let me see. Does that work for you? Okay. April 22nd. Check your phone and see. Um, I'm open. You open? Okay. You can't do online on the 19th? I do online. Okay. What is it for? Just to, just to make sure that we're going to go to trial on that Monday. I, that won't be necessary to go to trial. Well, I have to have a free trial to make sure, though, that the people are ready. I'm, it we might be because the people have to. The people have to be able to make sure that their witnesses are going to come. So with certain things that need to be put into place, okay. just to make sure any jury instructions that you want that are non-standard need to be presented that day as well. Okay. okay? All right. So other than that, we'll set this for it. That's not a bad day. Let me not do that day because I'm just coming back in town. And I know that's not going to. Anything happens, I know you want your day. What about May 6th? Okay, I just want to make sure you know how flights get delayed, and then you'll be up, extra upset with me if I can't move forward that day. So May sixth, so that Friday before, which is May third, online, just to make sure we're moving forward. That's all that is, and to make sure that the prosecution or the city can move forward on their case. John, I would like to let y'all know y'all is great injury, and and y'all do know y'all have to go before. DO, at least the DOS to see if they have jurisdiction over me. But I'll take the proper steps to do what I need to do because I'm not feeling even protected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, listen, I never I never get mad at when people believe. I'm not mad at But we following, just, you know, I'm because the people just, that the people want to the people, you know what I'm saying, all we want to do is the right thing, right? But when we got higher ups that's not really upholding they like, I know, but you have this. to be. Let me tell you I'm this, and this is this is not about all this. We have to be accountable for ourselves, no matter what everybody else is doing That's in this world, about. right? You have to be accountable for yourself. That's you know how many conscious. people I see doing stuff that I just be like they shouldn't be doing all the time. But my my set of right and wrong may be different from your set of right and wrong, correct? But there is something. That's why we have these laws, right? So it's written out in black and white so that we can be able to see it. And then we have the interpretation, as you said, right? The legislative and the judicial department interprets it as well based on how it's been practiced in the past. But you you can't get caught up in, in looking at all oh, these people, all these people are doing wrong, so why I gotta follow all of this? You're gonna get That's lost down a rabbit hole. What were you talking about then? I'm saying the people that try to catch these tickets, all we want to do is the right thing, but we're not being informed. Like we try, they try to make us get a driver's license insurance, but they need to let us know if it's voluntary or mandatory. It's mandatory in the state of Michigan. It's required. It's a requirement. To right. If you want to drive a vehicle, exactly. Mr. Williams, I want you to go home and listen to this. You just you keep saying everything. It's required, right? It's required. required. But it's not lawful. Because mission constitution say so. That's involuntary slavery. 
Yeah. What's your definition of slavery? Maybe that's where I'm getting lost. Uh, slavery, like the police pull us over. Since he can't pull his gun, I'll put his our heads and give me your money. I'm gonna give you this ticket, and you are gonna pay it on. And no. we come here and no, no. I asked what the definition was of slavery. Making us slavery is the create, involuntary legislature create persons by license, registration, insurance, and things of that nature. Too intelligent, Paul. You are so. I'm just. I'm trying. You are so. That's why the Constitution is created. Slavery is the condition in which one human being was owned by another. Right, and y'all, the, Jew, the legislature think they own everybody. Persons, they own pieces of paper. They that's don't a, own human beings. That's a, that's a, that's a um, belief, right? That's your, that's your belief. Article 1, right? Section 9, 10, clause 3, states that. I'm not just making it up. State of the U.S. Constitution and the Michigan Constitution. It's the same thing. U.S. Michigan Constitution, 1963. Like, then you say the same thing. <laughs> Just, stop talking. It's, it's I'll see you on the U.S. Michigan Constitution. Article right. 1. Section 9, 10. Clause 3. Right. And then I said, what's well, slavery? And slavery is the, the ownership of one person by another and asking them to do labor Right. In order for free. The legislature asks us to get a license. Not informing us. It's voluntary, not mandatory. So when we do get a license, we guilty before we innocent. When we buy, like when we enter into a contract, we bound by these statutes, which was make us guilty automatically. And that's unconstitutional, that's unlawful. But in the Constitution, our God it also says right. innocent until found guilty, right? The you automatic, you automatically guilty once you answer. answer oh, no, 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 you said the Constitution. I'm sorry, it's in the Bill of Rights. I correct myself. It's in the Bill of Rights, which is a part of the Constitution, but it's not physically in the Constitution. It is in the Bill of Rights. And I think the Fifth Amendment is what talks about the legal system being fair and unfair. So I'm all right. So what? What slavery is involuntary no. slavery. So what's no. section ten like? say? You're saying, what, 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 you're what saying because mean? you're saying that when they when you and off the record. Now I've already read my ruling. You're all set. <laughs> but what what does it mean? Can you tell me what it means? So so the 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 constitution is and the the slavery aspect was for them physically owning us. In particularly, black indigenous people from the, the continent of Africa bringing us over and then after a while forcing us to procreate and have additional human beings to work fields was giving them no pay, well, slavery, ownership of them, been, been branding been them, modernized. modernized because now they ask you to get a license that you don't have to get. Right. If you want to drive a vehicle on the road, correct. Because, and one of the reasons why they do it, because then who's paying for these roads if we don't have no revenue for them? Commerce. Commerce of the businesses. So you should have a license if you want to drive a and truck commerce. and that's it. No, over taxi. I don't know. Help me, Mr. Wood. You just said no, you should only you should not only have a license because let me tell you what the argument that I'm hearing right now in my head. What I hear you saying is that this is um can you read section 10 from section 10 of the article which one? one? Article one, section nine, twelve, three. We keep talking about this bill of attainer. Oh, listen to this. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening, even if I can't see you. Bill of Attainer. Okay. According to Constitution Annotated, Congress.gov, a bill of attainer is legislation that imposes punishment on a specific person or group of people without a judicial trial. Right. But I haven't given you any punishment. I can see if you plead guilty and I just had you plead guilty and I told you you couldn't have a trial. You can't have nothing. 
I don't even know if these allegations are true or not. They've just been alleged at this point in time. So it says, if, so that what that is saying essentially is if I say, you come before me today and I say, you did everything they said you did and more. Let me find you. I'm going to give you a $500 fine on it. And you standing there looking at me and you're like, what? And I'm like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to just give you a fine because that's what you that's what you get. I mean, look, you're here before me today, so you must have done something wrong. That's what that's saying without giving you the opportunity to be like, oh, hold up a minute. I didn't do anything wrong. I want to fight this. Oh, OK. Well, let me give you the opportunity to fight it. You got to listen to every single word. And if it just says that first part without the end part, OK, I could be like, OK, that's interesting. But what it's saying is that I impose something. I give it to you. Okay, interpret section 10. So what it's saying is that if at all, section 10, let me pull it up again. I thought I had it on my computer. Is it under the general government? It's under Michigan Constitution. Like Good declarations, place. elections, Good general rights. government, judicial branch. Bill of rights, you just said Declaration of rights. Right. So when I pull up the 1963 Michigan Constitution, this is what it says. Article 1. It says. Section 10. We the last part, impairing what? Impairing obligations. Because obligations of contracts should be enacted. So what are they talking about? The contracts. This is for, bill of attainers aren't for us. Bill of for attainers, entities. Bill of attainers is contracts, license, registration. If I purchase a vehicle, it's up to me to either register or keep it private. If I register it, then the government not have that entrance and they get to regulate my private property. Right. Once right. you enter a contract, you Without automatically, trial, you automatically be guilty. But the state and federal government is that the fact that the bar, ban extends to the states now just shows the importance of those who draft the Constitution. The ban enforces the separation of powers by forbidding the legislative branch of government from engaging in judicial and executive acts. The ban supports the concept of due process, one of the rights attributed to the Constitution. Each individual state's Constitution also includes insurances of bill of attainer. Bill of attainer is for, forbidden by Wisconsin's Constitution. The separation of power. It talks about the separation of powers, checks and balances. You just read it's that it keeps the legislature oh, from You know what? This is talking about we they can't in, individually enter into contracts with like other entities. Like I can't enter into a contract oh, with the state of Michigan, can't enter into a contract with another. So you gotta read why because I'm not like, why does it keep talking about these separation of powers and stuff like that? Yeah, so it's talking about like you, like you just right, keep right. acting judicially. So that like, means that 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 so that means that the president can't go out here and enact all these deals and stuff with different foreign even, nations even the without legislation with but I, do you want to know what these this is about or not because you interpret it for what you want but then you have me now i got to go online well it is and look up the stuff. right no i am the beneficiary <laughs> no yeah. no but so Yana, the, the Yana, important thing what's, what's, what's said so, what, what's said you're on speak what's yes, said go ahead you were intelligent too, right? Mm -hmm. God created man, man created government, government mm -hmm. created corporations, corporations created corporation entities. It's impossible for the creation to rule over its creator, right? The legislature create persons, like offices of persons. The legislature can't create people. So the legislature somehow persuade living people to enter into this contract, which is a license. I don't have to listen. I have not once told you you had to get a license. I understand, Your Honor, but I'm going to use you. You and Southern, right? You work under the judicial. Uh, no, you work yeah, under I'm the under judicial. No, I'm no, no, under you, legislature. Well, I interpret the acts of the legislator, but I'm under the judicial. You're right. I'm under the judicial branch. And the, our constitutional rights keep government from overstepping. So, what gave you power is the Constitution, right? And somehow, like you intelligent, it seemed like the legislature like have possessed a lot of the people. And since they possess, they try to possess other people with the legislature. Got. 
I mean, but so you give life to the less that you less that you don't give life to you. To some extent, so we know that they give us some of our power stuff, right? But your ultimate power comes from the Constitution. It does, but they give us powers as well. Like based on the and law. If so if there were no laws, there would be the if there were no laws, there wouldn't be no need for judges, right? Right, and that goes back biblical now. Don't go biblical on me. Because y'all know this, but I love good biblical. You said, well, hold on a second, one second, one second. No, it's no big deal. I can um go. I need to prepare for my um afternoon class, okay. and I apologize for my my uh camera not being on for some no, reason. It actually you are fine, so. Miss Fredlin. Um, if you have to have discussions about this, just let me know, okay? Okay. Thank you, you know, so much for your time and consideration to, to the argument. So, all right. Enjoy school today. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.